So today I'm going over a little feature that I've added in my game recently. If you look in the bottom left, I have like a currency value, and obviously these enemies are not animated and they look ugly, but whenever I kill one, it's going to increase that currency um, by a specific amount, and you can see this cool little animation. So the number is going to like animate up to the current value. It's in quite a few games, and I think it's actually super easy to implement, so let's look at how I did it. So here's my very like crude implementation of this, and I'm going to show you one that I think is better in a second here, but essentially I put my code inside of the process function, so every single frame I'm going to be checking if the current currency is not equal to the intended, then I'm going to interpolate the current value all the way to the intended value with a specific formula. And this is based off of delta, so it will sync to the frame rate. Now, you could argue that this is inefficient because we are checking this expression every single frame. And technically, that's not needed. So what I've done is set up another project here. And this one has a slightly different approach where we're using a tweening system. So what I've done is I've made a scene for my animated number and just given it a label node. And then I added a script to the label and we can just walk through this one really quick. So I have two values for the coins, right? I have my current coins value and this is like the real amount of currency that this object would have. And then I have my fake coins and this is gonna be the number that we are displaying on the actual label. And then the last variable is just a tween. But with this system, I can just set the coins variable directly and it's gonna trigger the animation. So basically how it works is in my input function, if I click the UI accept, which is just space or enter or whatever, it's gonna set the coins equal to a random range. And by setting the coins, you may have noticed that we have a setter function on the coins variable. So that's gonna trigger the setter function. And all the setter function is going to do is make sure to update the coins, obviously, and then it's going to essentially reset the tween. It's gonna set up this tweening object, which is the variable right here. Now, another benefit really quick is you can change the easing types or the transition types if you want your animation to be slightly different. I have a whole video that goes over tweens, but this is pretty basic. So after we set up the tween, we're just calling the tween property method, and then we're tweening the fake coins value to the value of coins. Another benefit of this system is you can define the length of the animation very easily, and because tweens automatically adapt to the frame rate, you don't have to worry about the delta equation or anything like that. So by tweening the fake coins, this is going to be updating the value every frame until the tween is complete. So what I've done is attached another setter function to the fake coins, and this is gonna call the function down here. So when fake coins is set, which is again from the tween, it's going to obviously update the value. And then all we're doing is setting the text of our label, which is self, to the string format of fake coins. So if I run this game, you can see kind of what it looks like. I'm gonna full screen it here. But whenever I press space, it's gonna randomize the value and it slowly interpolates towards the number. Now, obviously, like I said, if you wanna change the duration of the animation, that's really easy to do. Uh, just go to the tween property. I could set this to something like uh, one, that'll be double speed. And then you can also change the transition type. So uh, I could do something like uh, trans elastic. Let's see how that looks. And now we're gonna have slightly different behavior. So, so you can mess around with this, kind of tweak it to your liking because it's really easy to implement like low effort polish that you can add to your game to just spice it up a bit. And I know a couple people were asking about how I did it. So I figured I would share, but that's really it for this video. Now there is a quick message from our sponsor if you'd like to stick around and then I'll just go over the outro of the video. This video is sponsored by Cody Tech. Cody Tech offers free programming courses in a ton of different languages. So whether you're just learning how to code or you are wanting to pick up a new coding language, Cody Tech is a great option. Now I've been learning Rust recently through Cody Tech, which is something that I've wanted to pick up for some time. And I've really been enjoying how they present the information and kind of teach it to you with their questions. Now, if you want to get started learning through Cody Tech today, you can click the link in the description, but I definitely recommend checking them out and seeing if that learning style fits you. Thank you so much to Cody Tech for sponsoring the video. Now back to Godot. Just wanted to shout out a quick thanks to all of the current channel members. If you do want to become a channel member, the links are in the description of the video or on my channel bio. And if you want to check out the other links, like join the Discord or whatever, those are also in the description. Thank you so much for watching the video, though. I hope it taught you at least something that you could implement in your games. If you already have something like this implemented, feel free to share 
other ways that you polish up the UI and stuff in your games because I think this is something that is pretty essential for like game feel but not a lot of people discuss it. So make sure to subscribe if you want more Godot content and I will see you guys in the next one.